today I'll show you how to access the clinical menu where you can change advanced features like the therapy mode and pressure levels. To begin, click and hold the eye icon in the top right. Then click login and we're in. It's as easy as that. So on this page, this screen, <laughs> we can change the therapy mode up here, currently in automatic mode, APAP mode. We can change it to CPAP mode if we like. We'll start in APAP mode. Over here on the left, we have our pressure max and pressure min level. Currently pressure min at 10, pressure max at 16. And this is the therapy range. The auto algorithm will only work inside that range. Here in the middle, we can change the algorithm, the response of the algorithm. Standard and dynamic. Now it's my understanding that the dynamic response mode has a higher sensitivity to conditions like snoring, airflow limitation, upper airway resistance syndrome, rearers and so on. So my advice would be to start in standard mode. If your AHI is really low, but you're still feeling tired and you're not sure what's going on, it's probably worthwhile trying dynamic mode to see if things improve. That's the beauty of CPAP settings. It's very, very easy to change a mode and see what happens. Over here on the right, we have soft pap. Now soft pap is exhalation pressure relief. It drops the pressure as you exhale to make therapy more comfortable, especially at the higher levels, but it also has another trick up its sleeve and I'll explain. So we'll click soft pap. When soft pap is on zero, there is no exhalation pressure relief. Inhalation and exhalation pressure are the same. If we go to one, we have a mild level of exhalation pressure relief. And I'll give you a demonstration of this after I've explained it. Moving up to two, we have a moderate level of exhalation pressure relief. When we exhale, the pressure delivery will be reduced by a moderate level, around two centimeters. Now, when we get to level three here, it changes a little bit. Yes, it gives you a moderate level of pressure relief as you exhale, but it also gives you a burst of pressure on the inhalation, a little increase, a little bump. And this is really handy for those people that have that suffocation feeling at the lower pressure levels. Really, really handy. So level one and two, great for those higher pressure levels when it's difficult to exhale against the incoming pressure. But level three gives you that little bump on the inhalation and it really works. And I'll show you that now. Let me just grab my mask. <laughs> A lot of stuff going on <laughs> on this bench today. Oh, here we go. All right. So let's start with soft pap off. Now watch the pressure. It's staying on 10 centimeters. dropping down a little bit, mild exhalation pressure relief. Level two. It's dropping down even more. Always coming back up just to 10. 
down at seven now. Now watch this. Watch the inhalation. See that? Up to 11. And down to 7. So that's a great example of soft pap in action right there. A little bit of mild exhalation relief on one, moderate exhalation relief on two, and then moderate exhalation relief plus that little burst where it went from 10 to 11 on the inhalation. Now, I have a feeling this is going to be really handy for airflow limitation. That increase in flow, that increase in pressure on the inhalation, that push, I think it's really going to do wonders. So... I can't wait to check out the data on that. Okay, moving on. Where are we here? Soft pap lock. Now, because we're in the clinician settings, clinicians have the ability to lock different settings if they want to, if they choose to. We want to turn all the locks off so we have access to all the settings. So soft pap lock should be off. Uh, let's go to CPAP mode. So we're changing now to fixed pressure delivery where the machine will deliver one set pressure. And we can change that by clicking that and just dragging across and then clicking the plus. All right, just changed it from six to 10 centimeters because obviously I had a lot of obstructive events. My AHI was high, so I needed an increase in pressure to force air into my lungs. And once again, we can change soft pap if we want to go back to APAP mode here. Now we'll go to home and we'll go this button, this icon down here and we'll click therapy and we'll click comfort. On the left here, auto start on, auto start off. We can change that to off or on, same with this, off or on. Auto start on will, you put your mask on, start breathing, the machine will start automatically and vice versa, take your mask off and it will automatically stop. Let's have a look at this. Soft start max and soft start pressure min four centimeters. So soft start max, this is like a ramp period. Now I'll just change this to 30. And we'll set the soft start pressure to five. And I'll explain it. Now, currently, our automatic settings, our P max and P min were 16 and 10, if I remember correctly. So 10 was the bottom level, the lowest level. I might find when I hop into bed that 10 is a little too high while I'm awake, drifting off. So we can set a ramp period at a lower pressure level while we're drifting off to sleep. So currently I've got the soft start pressure min at five centimeters with a 30 minute ramp period. So it will start at five when I hop into bed and over 30 minutes, it will gradually increase the pressure up to the P min up to 10 to help me get off to sleep. That's how that works. Now there's a little button up here. Let's click that. Smart aqua control off. <laughs> really testing my knowledge considering I've had this device for a couple of days. I believe smart aqua control, if we turn that on, it will provide adaptive humidification. And what that means is, let's just say we have our humidifier level set to three, level three. Now this machine has a rod, a heater rod. And level three corresponds with a set temperature of that rod, which delivers a set level of humidification, yeah? That rod heats up to a certain level, heats up the water, provides a certain amount of vapor. However, if you have a lot of mass leak, mouth leak, and so on, then the actual delivered humidification drops. So this smart aqua control 
it will monitor your leakage and it will adapt that rod temperature to provide that constant level of humidification, yeah? If that humidification is dropping because of your mouth leak, so on, it will increase the rod temperature. So I think the best bet for you guys is to have that setting on. Now something's happened here. Let's go back in. Comfort. Mask test pressure 14. You can run a pressure test at whatever level you choose. Let's just say I want to choose 10. The machine will run 10 centimeters and check your mask seal for you prior to sleep so you can make sure it's adjusted correctly. Humidifier level between one to seven. As we increase the level, the temperature of the rod inside the humidifier will also increase to deliver more water vapor, more humidification, which is really great for dryness, mouth dryness, nose dryness, throat dryness, if you're raspy in the morning, like I currently am. Okay, so we'll increase that because we're feeling a little bit dry. And once again, we have humidifier level max. This is a clinician control. If they want to limit your ability to go above a set humidification level, but we want that set to seven. All right, let's go back to home. Here we have alerts. This is when we can turn on the disconnection alert, the severe leakage alert and so on. I'm gonna have them off for now for me. And then we'll go back. Accessories, bacteria filter. You would switch this on if you were running an inline bacteria filter in a clinical setting, a hospital, etc., Most of you won't have that, so switch it off. We can change the tube type, 15 millimeter to 19 to 22 millimeter, depending on the diameter of your CPAP tubing. Um, this tube type lock, this is another clinician lock. Keep that off. Air filter reminder, you can have that on or off if you want the device to remind you to change your air filter, probably a good idea to have that switched on. Next we have device. We can set our time, date and time zone here. Signal data, I have no idea what that is. Signal data 14 days, not sure. <laughs> Sorry about that guys, I'll get back to you on that one. Signal data, uh, language, self-explanatory, Display, this is an important menu, this one. We can change the display brightness between one, two, and three. Keep it on three for now. We can change our compliance threshold. Most companies will use a compliance threshold of four hours. This means you need to use your machine four hours per night to be deemed compliant with therapy. But you can change that if you like. We can change the unit of pressure if we want. HPA, M bar, centimeters H2O. Most people use centimeters H2O these days. Now this one's important here. Patient info menu. We want that set to all because this will give you all the statistics in the information section, which I'll show you in a minute. Now, if we press the I again up here, these are the therapy statistics. I haven't used this device yet, so there's nothing there. But I'll come back to that and we'll uh, go through a video explaining all the statistics that you can see on your screen. And I think that is all she wrote. Let's go back. Oh, service reset here. We can restore the device to factory settings so I want to start again, a blank canvas. We can delete therapy data. This might be useful if you purchase one of these devices secondhand. We've got a maintenance counter here. This is pretty cool. I don't really know of any countries that do maintenance. There's not any service centers that I know of, but that would be really cool if there was. And every two years, like your car, you take it in, they do a bit of a service, clean everything up, do a few pressure tests and make sure everything's A-OK. -okay. Good little business idea for anyone <laughs> watching. Uh, we've got, let's click this here. 
memory check. Okay. Let's see how much memory is on this bad boy. Memory check has been successfully completed. I don't know what that does. <laughs> I assume it's checking how much memory is on the hard drive. Maybe it's checking my memory <laughs> on this device. I don't know. And then demo mode here is for the CPAP clinics. They can put it up on a shelf, click demo mode, and it runs through different screens. So potential customers can see what the different screens have on them. That's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you give it the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you like. As always, sleep well, make every moment count, and I'll see you soon. Cheers. G'day mates. This video is sponsored by Sleep HQ. Upload, review, and share your detailed CPAP reports with anyone from anywhere. Visit sleephq.com and join our free community today.